This is the gearbox of Kamlexec Jesco. It has 7 clutches, differential, gearbox with 9 speeds and reverse, all built in same assembly, which weighs just 90 kgs. It is considered very light because remember, it's not a toy car. The engine itself makes 1600 HP. Not only that, this assembly is so compact that you won't even believe that it's of a sports car reaching 300 miles an hour. Well, to clarify, this is not because of any revolution in material science. All of the material used here are pretty usual. But this is made possible purely because of clever mechanics and first principle thinking. So how does this transmission work? Let's untangle in this video. The system has 7 clutches in gearbox. The clutches are used here in a different way. Rather than using a clutch just to engage and disengage the engine connection and relying on synchronizers to shift gears, this system directly uses clutches to shift gears to decrease the shift delays even more. The engine on this car doesn't have any flywheel either as it would increase the weight. So the gears and shafts in the gearbox assembly are used as mini flywheels to store the inertia and give it back. The gearbox looks like this. The engine gives power to this shaft and finally driven shaft is this which connects to the differential to drive the car. The position of clutches is such that even when they are not engaged, the gear sets actually spin like a constant mesh gearbox. As the engine is always connected to this shaft, hence these gears always spin, working as mini flywheels all the time. While any of the forward gears are selected, then all of the gear sets work as mini flywheels. In this video, we won't be going into the details of clutches, but we'd we'll rather focus on how the company managed to make such compact and lightweight assembly. In traditional gearbox, you have one clutch shaft, one lay shaft or counter shaft, and one main shaft. And in some gearboxes, engine is directly connected here, requiring only two shafts. But in both the cases, one gear pair is required to make each gear ratio, which means number of gears possible are equal to the number of pairs of gear sets. Like, 6 pairs would make 6 gears and 9 would make 9. But Jesco's gearbox is different in a way. This gearbox makes ratio by compounding gears. There are only 6 pairs of gear sets to make 9 ratios. And it has 3 shafts. Out of the 9 combinations and 1 reverse, first let's understand the 9 combinations then we'll jump up to the reverse one. The engine gives power to this shaft and all of these gears spin freely. Now this clutch is engaged. This rotates the second shaft via the gear. At this time, these two gear sets are disengaged from the second shaft, hence are freely rotating. Now on the second rotating shaft, there are three combinations of gear sets, which spin these gears on third shaft, out of which first one is selected by engaging this clutch. So the power from the engine flows like this. This is the first gear by compounding. Now for the second gear, this gear is kept as it is while the second combination on this shaft is selected. So this gives the second gear ratio. Similarly, the third one is obtained. Now for the next three combinations, this first gear is disengaged and the second one is engaged. This makes the shaft spin faster than what this first one did. So now again by selecting either of these three combinations on third shaft, we get three more gears which are fourth, fifth and sixth. So that's a total of 6 gear ratios made possible until now. Now by engaging 3rd gear on this shaft, we can again get 3 more combinations working as 7th, 8th and 9th gear, out of which 8th and 9th are overdrives. By this technique, 9 gear ratios are made just by compounding 6 gear sets. As less number of gear pairs are required, the weight of the system is reduced significantly. Now there is a cleverer thing ahead, that is reverse gear. Generally, we have one extra gear which is called as idler gear which fits between these two gears to reverse the direction of rotation so that you could obtain reverse direction of wheels giving you the reverse gear. But adding one gear means increasing the weight. So in Jesco, rather than adding one extra gear, they actually reduced one gear and connected the first and third shaft directly. This gives the same effect of reversing the direction of rotation but with less number of parts. Now in this schematic, as these two shafts are far away, it may look like bigger gears are required to connect this shaft, which would increase the weight, but it's not the case. The schematic is just to understand the working. The side view of the system would look like this. I'm not showing the teeth here, I'm just showing the PCDs of it. Side view of the schematic would look like this, but actually it is arranged in more of a triangular fashion, 
like this. This brings these two shafts closer to each other. Here, as the engine and main shaft are closer to each other, so to directly connect them, relatively smaller gears are required than the straight arrangement. Hence, these smaller gears save weight. To add up to this, the triangular arrangement also helps to decrease the footprint of this whole system, making it more compact. And this compactness also means smaller casing is required, reducing the weight even more. That's how the most brilliantly designed sports car transmission work and weighs as light as 90 kg while being able to transmit 1600 HP at 9 plus 1 different speed ratios. This is probably the first video on internet to explain this technology in depth. So, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit notification bell to get notified for future videos. Also make sure you hit the like button and share this video. If having any question or comments, feel free to mention them down in the comment section below. As of for now, I'm signing off and see you guys next week.